In the last two videos, we looked at the electrolysis of a concentrated aqueous solution. In this video, we'll look at um, the electrolysis of a dilute solution. So, electrolysis, dilute, aqueous. And we'll see in a minute why this why and how this differs from the electrolysis for a concentrated solution. So in a dilute solution, um, what that means is that the, um, the amount of the species we are interested in is very much less than in a concentrated solution. So you can think of uh, a dilute sugar solution, for example, would not taste very sweet, but a concentrated sugar solution would um, taste very sweet because it's got lots of sugar in it versus water whereas the dilute solution has very little sugar and lots and lots of water so it doesn't taste that sweet. So let's jump right into it by way of an example here. So the electrolyte that I'll use this time will be a dilute solution of salt, of common salt, sodium chloride. So we did um, an electrolysis of concentrated sodium chloride two videos back. So for purposes of comparison, we'll take a look at dilute sodium chloride this time. And just as we do with electrolysis, we'll start with the beaker. And I will put my inert carbon electrodes here, connect them to a cell, shorter end negative, longer end positive, and I will fill the beaker with my solution of dilute sodium chloride aqueous make sure that we call this the carbon electrodes, both of them. And so the sodium chloride will break up into sodium ions and chlorine ions and also since it's dissolved in water we have water in the solution and some of this water will break up into hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions so the negative ions will be attracted to the positive electrode since unlike charges attract. So I'm going to write my chlorine and hydroxide ions below the anode here. And I will write the positive ions, the sodium and hydrogen ions below the cathode since the positive ions are attracted to the negative electrode. So now, remember the rules of the game being that we can only choose one ion to be discharged at each electrode. At the cathode, we can either have the sodium or the hydrogen ion be discharged. At the anode, I can either have chlorine or hydroxide be discharged. And the way we choose between um, each of these two species at each of the electrodes is by looking at the reactivity series. So this is the reactivity series I had from the previous video. The ion to be discharged is the one that is less reactive. In this series I have listed the ions from the most reactive to the least reactive, most reactive to the least reactive. So at the cathode, if I compare sodium and hydrogen here, which I've already circled, you can see that 
hydrogen is less reactive than sodium. So hydrogen will be discharged, just as in the case with a concentrated sodium chloride solution. At the anode, we have chlorine and hydroxide. Now with the concentrated solution, we had chosen chlorine because it was less reactive than hydroxide. But this being a dilute solution changes things a little. The reason is because now we have very little chlorine ions in the solution, but we have a whole bunch of hydroxide ions in the solution. So it's getting kind of crowded in there for these hydroxide ions. So what happens is, um, because it's so crowded in there, um, they, they tend to be forced out of the solution. And the only way to do that is to become discharged, to give up their electrons and form something else. So the difference between a dilute solution of sodium chloride and a concentrated solution of sodium chloride is that the hydroxide ions are now discharged instead of the chlorine ions. See, at the cathode, we don't really have a problem because um, we have lots of hydrogen ions and they also happen to be less reactive than sodium. So they were going to get pushed out anyway, but since they're less reactive, they'll come out willingly on their own. So let's write the half equations at the anode and the cathode. At the cathode, we had established that the hydrogen ions will be discharged, so the hydrogen ions will receive some, excuse me, negative electrons from the negative terminal of the battery to form hydrogen gas, which is diatomic. And since I have two hydrogens here, I need two hydrogens here to balance it. And so I need two electrons to cancel the positive charge from each of the two hydrogens. At the anode, I now have hydroxide ions. So this is something new. It's not something we've seen before. And these hydroxide ions are going to give up their electrons. Now it turns out that when these hydroxide ions give up their electrons, they form oxygen, gas, and water. So I have an odd number of oxygens here in water. So I even it out by putting a 2 here. So that will result in 2 times 2, 4 hydrogens. And 2 oxygen here with 2 oxygens here gives me 4 oxygens. So I have 4 hydrogens and 4 oxygens on the right side. So I'll just put a 4 here to give me 4 oxygens and 4 hydrogens. Now these 4 hydroxide ions have 4 electrons that they need to give up. So I'll write the electrons that were given up on the right side of the equation. And so since the hydroxide ions gave up electrons, they are oxidized. So once again, if you're not familiar with oxidation and reduction yet, um, don't worry about this for now. We'll look, look at it in a future video. And here we have the hydrogen ions receiving electrons, so they received something that was minus, so we say that they're reduced because they became more minus. And they're reduced to hydrogen gas. So let's draw the products of my electrolysis here. I have hydrogen gas released on the cathode, and this time, I have oxygen released at the anode. So once again, for comparison between the dilute and concentrated, in the concentrated case, I had chlorine gas, but now I have oxygen gas instead. Let's go ahead and find out the overall equation for this reaction. So I'll add these two equations up by 
this thing then down here. I'll leave out the state symbols for now. And so I have two hydrogen ions, two electrons here, giving me hydrogen gas. Now notice that this time I only have two electrons on the left side while I have four electrons on the right side. So I need to balance the number of electrons before I can write my full equation because um, when you write your full equation you want to make sure that you don't get any electrons left over. So the electrons have to cancel each other. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply the second equation by 2. So that will result in 2 times 2, 4 hydrogen ions, 4 electrons will give me 2 hydrogen molecules. And so now I will balance these two equations. This one stays the same, but this is my new equation for the cathode which has been multiplied by 2. So since I have 4 electrons on the left side and 4 on the right side, I can cancel them and thus write my overall equation for hydroxide and for hydrogen ions results in 2 hydrogen gas from here one oxygen, two water, right. so just to be clear I'm not using this anymore, I'm looking at these two equations, and so with the electrolysis of dilute sodium chloride my products are hydrogen, oxygen, and water which of course remains in the solution. So going back to the solution we see that both the hydrogen and hydroxide ions took place in chemical reactions while the sodium and chlorine ions did not and since they didn't take place in a chemical reaction we call them the spectator ions They're just sitting there watching the game go on, not really doing anything. So in this case, um, we see that the pH of the solution doesn't change because we've removed, for each hydrogen ion that was removed, one hydroxide ion was removed. So the solution remains neutral. If you've not studied acid base yet. Um, once again, don't worry about it. We'll look at acid base in a future video. So to summarize with the electrolysis of dilute sodium chloride, I get hydrogen gas liberated at the cathode, oxygen gas liberated at the anode, and my sodium and chlorine ions are spectator ions. To conclude, um, we'll take a look at how this compares with the concentrated sodium chloride solution. So with the concentrated sodium chloride solution, all right, plus for the anode, and minus for the cathode, and I have dilute sodium chloride aqueous. So with the case of concentrated sodium chloride aqueous, I had chlorine gas released at the anode and hydrogen gas released at the cathode. With the case of the dilute sodium chloride, I'm having oxygen released at the anode and hydrogen released at the cathode. 
So that was the electrolysis of dilute sodium chloride. In the next video, we will go through another example of electrolysis of a dilute aqueous substance.